All right, so I'll go back. The, so Monday, we have the power out, and we have some feedback. And so what I did was uh, post this uh, uh, Monday. And then I also posted this emotional example. Let's do at the end of this week. I'll go to the assignments thing, and you'll see that the Stroop final research paper is due this Sunday nine, and the data should also do the same day time. We'll need to do So now I think we did talk. Um, so that's what's due this week. So if you have any questions about the paper or the structure or anything else, go to this lecture for week 10 as I post Monday and that'll help you out. Okay. Now, what I wanted to talk about today, <coughs> since April 6th is exactly two weeks from now, um, I know that. Mari, you and Zachary both are going to be presenting at the uh, Student Research Conference. And so what I have, uh, I know Mari, you're going to do a poster, right? Yes. I have a poster right here. Um, and you can use this as a template for your own if you want to. So okay. what you'll do is when you go into your Zoom uh, meeting for that uh, research conference, You'll hit your share screen down at the bottom and then you'll pull up your poster. And then, you know, your little picture will show up in the corner, right, um, on Zoom. And you'll just want to put your title at the top, uh, and then your name, and then put uh, Eastern New Mexico University there. So you can kind of just use this template and then just, uh, you know, erase whatever I've got here and kind of follow this structure. Okay, hi. Uh, Danielle, I sent you a Zoom link and you can see what we're doing on, on this, okay? Um, so anyway, a poster, usually you don't want to have this much text on it, okay? Because you want to describe yourself what's going on in your study. Uh, but I do recommend these sections like goals of research, what are the goals of your signal detection theory study. You want to do investigate discriminability and bias of whatever you're looking at, right? So I think yours was criminals or something like that. Yeah. Okay. And so you'll want to, you know, change this, uh, this text and then put down that goal. You want to see how well people can, um, uh, you know, discriminate whether a person's a criminal or not. And then what what their bias is when they make those decisions. So that's that'd be a relatively short section with a little text. And then background down here is usually what you'll have uh, from your introduction section in your paper. So you can actually you know, take stuff from your intro in your paper and put little bullet points. Uh, well, not really bullet points, but just small paragraphs. Uh, discussing, you know, kind of the, the background behind your study, you know, what signal detection theory is, what discriminability is, and what uh, bias is, etc. And then you can kind of uh, put all that in this uh, series of paragraphs. Um, I think I would use text in, in both of these left-hand columns uh, because that's not a problem. But usually when you do a poster session, let's say we were face to face, and you had this printed out on a big uh, poster, right? Uh, 
the text is not going to look as small as it does here. But since you're going to be doing this on Zoom, you probably want to have some more white space, okay? Because that'll look um, aesthetically appealing, I guess, to, to whoever's watching this. And you're going to have a whole bunch of students who are going to be in the Zoom meeting and then we'll you know, show you stuff and talk to them, okay? Uh, okay. So the next part here in the middle, usually we put method and results sections here. And if you want to, um, you know, put some pictures of your stimuli. I think that would be nice to let people see what you showed people, right? And then uh, in the right-hand column, you'll give them the D prime and C values. And then uh, you might, what, what could you do in results other than that? Well, that's going to be a short section, I guess. Um, so I would go with uh, probably this middle column being one where you show uh, some of the stimuli that you showed the participants. And then you'll talk about how many participants you had, and how many men and women, what were their ages, Anything else? I'm trying to think back to that study. Um, I think that would be enough. But, you know, I would use kind of not real big pictures, but something that people can see. All right. And then you'll just have a short results section talk about what is discriminability, what is bias, and then you might give. Uh, the matrix, like uh, how many hits, how many misses, how many false alarms, how many correct rejections, and put that in a little table, and that kind of breaks up your text, okay? So it looks visually appealing. And then on the right-hand side, you'll just have little points, you know, how, what did you find, okay? Is it what you expected to find? And then, um, you know, something about maybe limitations of future research. Okay? And then you'll see there's a little box for references. Whatever you put in the poster, uh, you want to make sure you put a reference item for that. And that can be really small letters like I've got here on this uh, poster. So that's the way you do a poster. All right now, for Zachary, you are probably going to do a presentation, right? That's what you signed up for. Yeah. So in this case, you'll open up a blank PowerPoint. And on the first slide, you'll put your title, right? Whatever it might be. And then your name and affiliation. Okay. And then on the second slide, usually we don't write introduction. Usually we'll write research related to whatever it is you're talking about, okay? That's kind of the title that I have my students do. There's one more. I don't think you're sharing the... Uh, oh, this one? Yeah. All right, let me pull up a brand new power. Here it is. If it works. Okay. All right, can you see that now? Yeah. Okay, so again, on the cover sheet, you'll put the title of your work, your name, the middle initial, and the university. All right, and then on the next slide, can you see the next slide that I just added? Yeah. Uh, here, it's not going to write, you're not going to write introduction, you're going to write research um, in signal detection theory, okay? or you could just talk about signal detection theory generally, what is it and what do you get from it, I don't know, it's, it's up to you. So you could call it research in signal detection theory, or just call it signal detection theory, what is it? Okay, so it's nice to 
come up with a question and then answer it in short bullet points. So, um, let's see, detecting signals in ambiguous situations. Okay, that's kind of a short way to think about it. Right? And uh, is there anything else you want to talk about in terms of what it is? Probably want to mention like hits, misses, false alarm, okay. correct regression. All right. So, um, now let's see. What what would be the question for that? What is a hit, miss, false alarm, etc.? What what would be the overall question? For that? I suppose like the overall question would be like, what are we looking? Okay. Good. What are we looking for? Okay. So, you know, usually I like talks like this where you ask a question and you answer it to the audience. Right? So, what are we looking for? Hits, misses, false alarms. And I'm just going to list them, right? Alarms and correct injections. And then you can explain all those in words, right? You can even use an example. Um, from past research, maybe. Okay. And then you can describe what is a hit, what's a miss, et cetera. Okay. And then um, we want to talk maybe about discriminability and bias. So, what is the question for those two? What are we measuring? Okay. Yeah. How are we measuring or what? What, how are, let's see, what, what, can we, what are we measuring? Yeah, I guess that's good. Okay, and then we would talk about the spring in ability and bias, right? And then under that, I would put D prime, I'll insert a symbol, D prime, the prime symbol is right here. So I think that's enough for a slide. You don't want to, you know, whenever you're making a presentation, even in a class, right? You don't want to have a bunch of junk on, on each slide, right? You want to talk about everything that's on this in your own words and just give the audience a kind of an outline of what you're talking about, right? You don't need to have, you know, great visuals or anything else. Just we are looking for content really in psychology. So you know, if you ever go to graduate school, they don't want to see a whole bunch of you know, text on the slide. Right? They want to hear you talk about the research. And you should know what you're talking about, right? All right. So the next slide here is where I would talk about studies that relate to yours, or you want to talk about how you came up with your study based on past research or how did you come up with your study? You just had an interest in. Yeah, I've just uh, generally had an interest in uh, substance abuse. Okay. So my interest in signal detection theory application or something like that. Uh, applications or application? In application of signal detection theory, I guess. Uh, you know, and just kind of think it out to yourself. How do I want to word these titles? That may be too long, right? But um, I have a general interest in uh, disorders or substance abuse or. Yeah, substance abuse. Okay. Disorders. Substance abuse disorders. And I also have a general interest in neurobio or whatever. What do you want to say? Uh, neuroscience. Okay. And uh, let's see. So I would put a plus sign and say interest in neuroscience. Okay. 
And so, you know, you just talk about how did I come up with my own study uh, on this? Now, do we want to go into, yeah, I think we do want to go into what you creatively came up with for this study. And so now you want to describe, you know, brains on, brains that are normal. And brains that are addicted, cocaine addicted, yeah, okay. cocaine addicted, and the cocaine addicted brains were the signal. Uh, yes. Okay. And the normal brains were not the signal. So let's put that here. And now, you know, the audience will start to understand, okay, well, this, is, this makes sense because we're looking at detecting signals, right? Now, we're, um, I think we're at the point where we probably want to start talking about the method, right? Are we missing something by not talking about past research? Is there any past research in this area? Uh, there was a little bit that I referenced, but it wasn't really like, I don't know, I had really nothing to do with my own study. It was just talking right. about so signal you, detection theory. Creatively, okay. So, you know, in some students who were at a distance, you're probably thinking, well, I probably came up with the idea for my study from reading a, a paper you know, that dealt with some aspect of signal detection theory. But, but in Zachary's case, he just creatively came up with this, right? All right, so you know, it's up to you if you want to include some citations. I think you should, maybe. I don't know. I'll probably, I'll I'm definitely going to include citations for the discussion, because okay. the discussion is where I really uh, use past research to kind of fuel my interest. Interpret? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so somewhere in here you want to have some citations. All right, next slide is going to be method, right? Do we want to label it method? I guess we do. Um, Do we want to use pictures instead of words for this? And then just describe stimuli. Yeah, I would probably want to do two method slides, one with, uh, you know, like text describing what I did or not describing the outline again that I talked about. And then the second slide with like the actual stimuli. Okay, all right. Or examples. Yeah, because you can see on the first three, three slides, we have a lot of white space, right? Uh, and so at some point, you want to use some visual kind of picture or something. Right? So it's up to you. I mean, I would start out, you know, if you want to use text, uh, I talked about, you know, 30 participants um, or whatever it was, 10 men and 20 women. I'm just making this up, but. Uh, See, they um, participated virtually in the experiment on whatever platform you used. And the, say that little bullet point. Um, how did you recruit them? Recruiting method. I just put a space for that. Um, anything else about participants' age? You know, you might give a range and then the mean and standard deviation. All right, and that's what you usually do in a standard talk when you talk about your sample, right? And how you got it. And then materials, I guess, would be the next one. And, and probably, I wouldn't call it materials, I just uh, have a slide that says stimuli. I click out that box and I just put some pictures in, right? And on the left, you'll see a normal brain. On the right, you'll see a cocaine addicted brain, right? 
so that's uh, I'll just leave a blank slide for that. And you know, you might talk in words about where you got them from and things like that. And then you'd say, I showed 12 cocaine addicted brains, and I showed 12 normal brains, and I mix those up and you talk about that little, you know, setup. After that, I think it's okay to go ahead and talk about results, right? So what about define? What about bias? And then uh, that's about it for results, right? So we're still kind of using lots of white space on these slides to show what was found. You couldn't show on this a, uh, a matrix showing hits, misses, false alarms, correct rejections, right? If you want to, and that would probably be wise because you have a lot of white space here. So what you can do is go to Excel and make a nice little figure or table and paste it right here. Then, as you talk to the audience, you probably want to talk about, you know, bias, especially because if you're biased liberally, what are you going to see in that matrix on hits, misses, false alarms, and correct rejection? You're going to see more hits and false alarms. Okay, because those are yes responses, right? And that you want to explain that to the audience, right? It looks like my hits and false alarms were elevated because people were liberally biased and they were saying yes. So, okay, and that explains to the you know listener what's going on and how this works. You know, because you may have some freshmen in there and you may have some community members, you don't know who's going to be the audience, right? So, you know, using lots of technical terms, it's really uh, it's okay for graduate school, but if you're, you know, talking to a general audience, I wouldn't make it terribly technical, but make it easy for them to understand and interpret your results. Okay? And then the next slide is going to be discussion. And here you said you used some citations. Um, why were people so bad at detecting brains? Or I don't know. I forget your results. How did it work? Uh, so my discussion was talking more about um, <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Uh, so my discussion was about um, basically like a what sticks out to me the most and where I use citations for like a potential applications of this uh, particular kind of experiment. Yeah, the right. thing this experiment and uh, kind of about like the current debate in neuroscience about whether or not, you know, like drug abuse actually significantly alters your, you know, brain structure or Good. not. Good. All right. So you have maybe three bullet points and they're really short and then you just talk and talk about each of those points, right? And that should be really interesting. And then at the end, of course, you'll have references. Whatever you cited in this whole talk, you're going to put them not in bullet points, but um, in hanging indent, just like on the paper, okay? And you can use small font, it doesn't matter. You can do that, okay? Now, I see some students who, who will put a slide after this and say questions, right? I don't know if I like that or not. Have you seen that before when people make presentations and then they write questions on the last slide? <clears throat> You know, and then some students are just in a real hurry to get done and they'll say, and that's it, or, you know, that's my talk, or whatever. That's a bad way to end the talk, too, right? You probably want to, uh, well, some of them just say, and these are my references, and that's it. You probably want to end with your discussion points and then just continue talking through your last discussion point as you click to the references sheet. And then when you end with your last discussion point, then you probably, on the reference page, you probably want to say, I appreciate the time that you've given me to talk about you know, this interesting topic. And now I'm, I'll take questions, any questions that you have.
you make it really kind of, uh, it seems like that's more courteous than just ending really quickly with, and these are my rooms, okay? Because that's kind of amateurish. Right? So again, I take the last bullet point on your discussion. You know, when you get about halfway through that, click through references, right? And then kind of wrap it up by saying, I appreciate you taking your time to listen to my talk. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll take those now. And that's the way to do it kind of professionally. Okay. So I'm going to go get a drink and then we'll talk about this. Then we'll... What? Why not? Yeah. As far as CC. That's like the most recent. Is the first of the term that you really can't do? Uh, the presentation or? Uh, it's on the site. Oh. Okay. So, do you have any questions of any kind? All right, well, I wanted to go over that, you know, just to kind of let you know what it's going to be like. Uh, we'll probably have a moderator that will introduce you in your talk. And then we will uh, have you go down and share your screen right at the bottom. And we'll be able to take some calls in there. So whatever you're presenting, make sure it's on your desktop. And I would be a Reliable computer, not on a laptop, maybe, you know? I mean, my if, laptop is pretty good. Okay, if you have like bad Wi Fi, if you're at home or something like that, I wouldn't do that. I'd go to the library probably and just use a PC with a microphone. Do they have those in the library? No? I don't think so. Oh. Uh, like honestly for me my best bet would be just at home with like you know a plain backdrop and just use my laptop okay well you can do that yeah because you know some of our students are like in albuquerque and different places so they'll be presenting so just make sure that your wi-fi feels strong and you, know, you feel confident about what you're doing and you might want to maybe practice the talk a couple of times to make sure that you feel comfortable with what you're saying, and if you don't understand something, I'm always available for questions. So you can answer. All right. So I know this talk was not directed at you or anybody else who's not going to present, but I want everybody to be there um, to support your fellow students who are presenting and uh, ask lots of questions. Lots of hard questions, right? So if you're not presenting, ask some hard questions of you fellow students, okay. All right, so let's do this week. We have the final stroop paper that's due and your data sheet, okay? Now I know some people are behind and that's okay. You wanna just plot along. You've got until like, what is it, May 1st, I think is the deadline for all the work up to that point to be done. So any past due stuff that you need to catch up on, uh, do it by May 1st. It's already, what, almost the end, end of March. So you wanna make sure that you, if you're behind, you know, go ahead and catch up with the week that you're in and then go back and, you know, submit stuff. And that, that will make it much better for you. Okay? Because I want everybody to succeed and go on to senior seminar, right? Some of you are already in it, right? Um, but, I want you to get out of here and graduate, okay? That's the main purpose of your whole experience. All right, so that is all. Any questions at all? <laughs>